Hey, I'm Andy Allardort, and in today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you about the great Dimebag Daryl, Daryl Abbott, late great heavy metal guitar hero from Pantera and Damage Plan. Now, when Pantera first started out, Dimebag would tune down a quarter step. Uh, for some reason, he liked to tune that tiny little bit down from standard tuning. And then uh, as time went on, he tuned down more and more. Uh, halfway through the Pantera career, he moved to tuning down a whole step, and then he would tune down a step and a half, and a lot of the damage plan stuff is tuned down a step and a half. For today's lesson, I'm going to keep the guitar in standard tuning, which is the closest to the way he tuned in the beginning. One of the great riffs that Daryl came up with was the Cowboys from Hell main riff uh, with Pantera, and that's based on the E blues scale. He starts it up in 12th position, and then he moves the riffs down an octave to open position using open strings. So first thing I'm going to show you is the E blues scale in 12th position and then we'll do the riff. Now here's the Cowboys riff played in this position. Here's a riff played slowly. Another technique that Dimebag used a lot was to use sliding two-note power chords on the bottom two strings in conjunction with a low E pedal tone or open six-string pedal tone. Uh, one of the best examples of that is the rhythm part, primary rhythm part for the verse for Mouth for War. Here it is. So one of the things that makes this riff sound cool is the chromatic movement between the power chords. When you hear the... It really sounds cool, and the use of chromatics is a big part of Daryl's playing, both in his rhythm parts and in his soloing. So here's another example of incorporating chromatic movement into a rhythm part. This is from the song, This Love. All right, this rhythm part is played a little bit quickly, and you have to palm mute the whole time, and it incorporates alternate picking. So we got. So that's how it's starting. Open E. So it works out of this F sharp power chord position of second fret on the low E, fourth fret on the A, fourth fret on the D. There's your chromatic movement, five, two, three, four, five. So the second time. Come down to a G5 power chord. Then you repeat the first part. Now in eighth note triplets, more chromatics up from F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, or B flat. A lot of times for rhythm guitar parts, Sarah like to incorporate a tuning known as drop D, wherein you tune your sixth string down a whole step. So instead of sounding E, it sounds a D. 
Now, oftentimes, as I was saying, he would tune the whole guitar down a whole step, so it was low E, really sounded a D concert pitch. In that case, it would all be relative uh, pitches. He would still tune when he wanted a drop D type tuning. He would tune his low E string a whole step lower than normal, and that would make it a low C. And that's some of the really low stuff. And then later on, in damage plan, that would go all the way down to a B. So if you're tuned down a step and a half, if you're following along, and you would tune your low E string down a whole step to emulate drop D, and that tuning end up with a low B, which is real low. We're in standard tuning, so I've tuned that E down a whole step to D. I incorporate palm muting into this part by using the edge of my palm and laying it across the strings by the bridge. You can see it's all downstroke. And sometimes Darrow would lean actually into the Floyd Rose a little bit with his wrist and it causes the pitch to be a little bit higher, which is a real warp sound. But you'll hear that in all kinds of heavy metal music. And then I did it without the palm muting. I right, one last thing on Daryl's rhythm guitar parts. Oftentimes he liked to use some very unusual chord voicings. A great example is the opening from Floods. He starts with C sharp minor add sharp four and then switches to a chord that can be analyzed as G sharp major seven sharp 11 with a B sharp bass. I know that's saying a lot. Uh, let me show that part to you right now. All right, we start with our C sharp root note, ninth fret of the low E, an E note, seventh fret of the A string, a G sharp note, sixth fret of the D. That's just a C sharp minor triad, but the open G against the G sharp, that's the add sharp four. And you make sure you let them all ring, so the fingers have to be standing up. Then the only thing that changes is the pinky comes off and, and we switch to one fret lower on the low E string to a C note or B sharp note. And sometimes he goes from the eighth fret back to the ninth fret and sometimes he goes from the open sixth string back to the ninth fret. Then after doing that twice going back and forth, we go down to So this is like E with a G-sharp bass. Fourth fret, second, second. Then just like straight G. Third fret, second fret open. On the bridge of floods, Daryl uses his chord voicing where he has a two fret spread between each the index finger, middle finger, and pinky. plays a series of chords all using that type of voicing. And then later he reprises that shape in his guitar solo and then the outro of the song too. So it's a useful thing to get comfortable doing. Let me play that part for you right now. So on the Floods guitar solo, Daryl reprises the use of these kind of shapes, but uses a lot of distortion and moves around with the melody, and it's great how he incorporated that idea into his solo. 
So here's the first four bars of the flood solo. All right, I'm starting with the C sharp, sus2 shape. And then the pinky sliding up, eighth fret to ninth and back. And then I do a, a hammer pull. So it's going six, eight, six, four. Middle finger, pinky, middle, index. And Daryl, He'll get a little bit of the pick, edge of the thumb into the pick attack to get that harmonic. Then we switch to A. Gonna slide up from the ninth fret to the 13th to the 14th, back to the 13th, back to the 11th. Then it goes to F sharp, same thing like we just did for C sharp, but down two frets and one string. Then over to B, back over one string. One of the techniques Daryl liked to incorporate into his soloing was wide stretches. We're gonna do some of that stuff, but before we get to it, uh, he did detail in uh, an issue of Guitar World from a while back his warm-up exercises, which are very useful. So I'm going to show those to you right now. Uh, they begin very simply just by hammering on uh, each string and moving across and going from the index finger to the middle finger, index to the ring, index to the pinky. I'll show you what that is right now. So we're going to begin by picking an F note that's fretted with the index finger, and then you're going to hammer on to the second fret, F sharp, pull off and hammer on again. So there's four notes with one pick. And then you just move over to the next string. Next string. All together. Then you move up. Move that all up and down the fretboard, staying as loose as possible. Do it nice and slow at first. And then pick up the speed. Then we're going to move to index ring. Same thing, pick up speed as you move up the neck and as you feel more comfortable. Then we're gonna go index pinky. Another warm up exercise Daryl would do is just to play uh, blues scale or minor pentatonic type riffs and move them around or uh, just particular shapes that feel comfortable, ones that he would use all the time. And this next example, this just comes right out of A minor pentatonic. Just on the top three strings, and we're gonna play two sixteenth note triplets repeatedly, and then move it up chromatically. And here's another cool riff that I like to use. And in this one, we're gonna spread the three fingers out over four frets. which is something he loved to do. Another thing to think about when Daryl soloed is he was not this kind of player with the thumb wrapped over the top. He had his thumb way in the back and had as much room as possible for his fingers to be coming down, oftentimes very straight. If we were to play it 
it's sort of based on a blues scale, but we're also incorporating the seventh fret on the high E and the B string as well. So here's one riff he would play. He liked to go. As I mentioned before, Darrell liked to incorporate wide stretches into his solo ideas for more unusual sounds. Some of these things were symmetrical in that you use the same fingering moving across the strings. Here's a couple examples of those things. I start with the 12th fret of the high E, hammer to the 15th with my middle, hammer to the 19th with my pinky, pull back off to the 15th, back off to 12, so that first part, and then you pull off to 12 again and that begins it again. You could pick each time and go. Which is one way to practice it. All right, let's wrap up with a technique known as harmonic squeals. Uh, this is uh, another natural harmonic technique, and Steve I and Satriani, Joe Satriani, those guys like using those techniques as well. Daryl did them all the time. And uh, what you do is you use the fret hand to pull off on the G string, and you immediately go down on the bar, and then as you're coming up, You can see I'm pulling off and dipping with the bar immediately, so you just hear the sound of ascending. While you're coming up on the string, you lightly touch the string at a certain point, which produces a natural harmonic. And then you have to block the other strings, either with your thumb and your other fingers, as you're coming up. And you can go to the 12th fret, 9th fret, 7th, 5th, 4th, 3rd. All right, let's start by coming up on the G and touching at the 12th fret. So what I did was I came down, but as soon as the string starts coming up, I lightly touch it to produce that harmonic. So it sounds like this. Do that at the ninth fret. Do that at the seventh fret. Fifth fret. Fourth fret. So you'll hear harmonic squeals along these lines on songs like Cemetery Gates and This Love. I'm Andy Alderk. I'll see you next time.